Are we rolling? Oh, nice. Welcome to WHAT with your hosts. <laughs> what? Andy Garcia. What? And Gil Garcia. We just got married. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks. I am now Congratulations a citizen. Congratulations to you as well. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to play international tours because we fixed Gil's papers. Starting with Canada. <laughs> Fun fact, Andy was actually born in Canada, raised in Nicaragua. <laughs> And uh, he did his uh, college in France. It was not France. My it's tiny nipples Sweden. went to France. <laughs> it was Sweden. Ah, uh, Sweden. Sweden. No, I, but welcome, everybody. Yeah. We're going to... This is a new podcast we're starting. So, uh, we're going to talk about this album. Andy, go ahead. Yeah. The, uh, there was a comment made to us about the last few times we've done some kind of interview podcast thing. And it was said that we consistently talk about How dicks well endowed I am. And vaginas and stuff. And we don't talk about stories with music. And as people spend time with us or hang out with us, stories come up about all the shit we've been through in 17 years of playing together, or with the album in particular. And uh, I don't remember who said it, but someone was like, why didn't you tell that story when you guys do these things? <laughs> so that's what we're going to do. It we're was Karina. Shout out to Karina. Oh, it was Karina. Because <laughs> it was the dick off story, which, by the way, is we a We are going to tell. <laughs> we're going to tell it again, <laughs> word for word. But uh, hmm. let's, let's run this album from the top. And let's fucking... Hey, is it real quick? Is it weird to, like, uh, talk to nobody and pretend like there's an audience? <laughs> <laughs> no. No? Good, no, no, good. Not really. Yeah, not weird for me either, yeah. It's crazy how fast you broke this. Well, I was... <laughs> Let me talk about this girl I know I seen her on my show before She was not there for the likes of me But she got my eye intuitively I know she's looking good Hey, fuck what Kyle says, dude I think our helmet is amazing Well, yeah After auto-tune I should look in with no clothes at all I I remember I really wanted to start incorporating slapping That's why Nasty Boy in this has I wanted to learn how to do it and they're really good. What can I say about this queen? Simple Jack. Like that is what they called you in high school. Those big brown eyes can melt a man. That winning smile is no scam. I wonder if she knows her all. No gods or demons could boast all. The desire I long for her is not so easy to deter. The desire I long for her is not so easy to deter. The desire I long for her. That was a mellophone in F. I know. Bad nerds listening, that was a mellophone in F. That I bought off Kyle. <laughs> Kyle is our weed dealer. Who says weed? <laughs> a lot of people. Yeah. I like to say marijuana. Remember how fast you wrote that fucking um, no, solo too? No, I can't wait to talk about that. Isn't that the, the one we wrote on the on the studio? On the studio? Uh, oh, this is the one you sat down and wrote. That's right. It's a cool song. And I want to talk about how the, the customer talks about you in Spanish. Oh, for sure. We're gonna shout out that motherfucker, dude. Yeah. That was a really nice, slow-burning joint. Good job, James. Those papers were fucking clutch. Remember who told us to do this last chorus like this? Yeah. He comes up with some good ideas sometimes. At Luis Cerde on Instagram. Please look him up. He is well endowed as well. <laughs> I thought you were signaling James something, but you're just measuring dicks. Ty, shout out Ty on the vocals right there. Mr. Ty Killingsworth. This is the sexy lows, and look right here, this is Ty. Nice. Yeah. La chica, dude. Dude. Bro, you, you know, a lot of people always ask us about our writing process. Yeah. And I always tell them how we both do all the time about how 
things just work or we have to something we have to work for jesus writes them that song just <laughs> came together so fucking fast dude. yeah dude i that was, was drunk that was too those, <laughs> <laughs> that was one of those like those who don't make it complicated get don't get congratulated. Wait, how's the saying? I don't know what the you're saying. The ones who make it complicated don't get congratulated. Ah. So that was a simple one where it was so effective. And I wanted to mention in there that obviously at a at the store, I tell hella people to listen to our shit. I have like a barcode. What tape store, Andy? Fucking, uh, at Rhea LA. <laughs> off of Gage and Western. <laughs> As a free advertisement. No, I paid for it. No, that's you right. You paid for it. Oh, that's right. But I was saying that um, I tell customers all the time to check that shit out. And there was one customer who, I'm not going to say he wasn't cool, you know, but. He wasn't cool. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> and uh, I asked him to check it out like I did everybody. And one day he came back and was very adamant when he walked in. He was like, hey, I heard the first song on your album. I was like, oh, thanks, man. Cool. And, you know, I always just say, oh, right. You just say thank you. Yeah. Like, thank you, bro. Just say thank you. And he was like, yeah, it was, it was cool, dude. It was kind of whatever. He was like, honestly, the dude writing, was it you? I was like, oh, no, it was, it was my husband. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, oh, way better in Spanish than English, dude. He's like, his English is, you know, pretty whatever rhymes. He's like, but his Spanish was fucking awesome. Well, you fuck sh- that, dude, because English is my second language, <laughs> so he can eat a cock. Was that good English for you, motherfucker? <laughs> I'm just kidding, bro. You know, it'd be tight if he heard this. And he's going to be like, oh, shit. Dude. Yeah, I hope he does. And we're going to fucking I bet you his dog. name is something like... Ray. <laughs> no, it was like Jesus. <laughs> was his last name Cristo? <laughs> it was uh <laughs> <laughs> That's not that funny. <laughs> <laughs> um Well no, but that song was cool to write, dude. I was very motivated, like I said. It was fun. It was like midnight. And you know what? I hadn't wrote a horn solo. In a minute. Since Sunday afternoon. Oh, well, actually, I was going to tell you something about uh, that first album, um, your new favorite album on Apple Music and <laughs> Spotify. And title. And title. Shout out to Jay-Z. Um, I, I showed it to a guy that I used to work with, and same thing. He was like, um, that was cool, man, but um, you guys kind of can't sing. <laughs> <laughs> For the first one? Yeah, for the first time. Yeah, you know did. what? People run it back. It's not bad. But it's not good. I actually, <laughs> I actually didn't hear it for a really long time until this one was going to drop. Yeah. And remember at the crib, you're like, hey, dude, let's listen to the first one. And there was parts that I, you know, I didn't like or I remember not liking the way it came out. But over and all, to hear the progression from that one to this one. Yeah. And as our title track to come off with this Sunday afternoon, like it's another kind of recipe that we do with these love songs. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, the lyrics fucking are simple, dude. No, we're not gonna it's, fucking play here, you know. But <laughs> I think they're they great work. Though, you know what I mean? Like they were. I, I wasn't trying to write a fucking Bible. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> yeah, that's actually a really good way to put it because yeah. that's one thing I always hear from people because I noticed that some people in particular, mm. unlike you, were for a long time are not willing to. <laughs> <laughs> for a long time, I remember you telling me how vocals you just hear as an instrument. You're mm-hmm. not hearing their words. Yeah. You listen to everything else. I just hear gibberish. There's a lot of people that just listen to lyrics. Right. So they're not listening to the way that we fucking wrote these sick, simple parts to come together. The mm. horn solo. The simple fucking, Jack. Yeah. And with the horn solo, I was going to say. Well, you actually I put had, time in that. That one, that was, that was hard. Dude. Which is kind of cool, dude, because it was like, I wrote this, I mean, I wrote this song for a girl, really, you yeah. know, like, and, uh. The way that you received it was actually kind of cool because you went so hard on trying to write a, a, a solo that you were proud of. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because like, the bass so part was, like, was fun. I as soon as I felt it, the da 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 like wrote itself. It just it felt like to give some movingness because yeah. you were doing that like cool rhythm on the guitar kind of. So I want to do some. I call that rhythm Mexican reggae. You know what? That's a great way to put it. And I'm gonna tell you that more when we write. We should. Yeah. What if we go for some Mexican reggae? Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I sat there with fucking Reggae? sheet music, like blank sheet music, and I remember I parked myself in the garage, and I grabbed the fucking horn. And <laughs> he I, drove his car into the garage <laughs> and parked. And I wrote the scale out, and I know, I don't know if people know this, but I had a full ride scholarship in college mixed with like academic music grants, like all of it made it work, and I got my music scholarship pulled because when I got there, the French horn instructor realized I wasn't fucking good enough. And I was like coasting off natural talent. I didn't fucking practice. So this was a moment for me since we were in college, which was fucking 10 years ago. Wow. Yeah. That I was like, because we wrote that, what, maybe 
a, a year two ago? Two years. Two years? Yeah, the beginning of 2020. So or the, the summer of 2020. The summer, sorry, the summer of 2020. I remember thinking, like, fuck this dude. I'm going to write a badass little solo. Yeah. And, I, I, you know, it's a marching horn, and I'm really happy with the intonation it got with it from the way that I played it. It sounds and I, great. And when I wrote the scale out, I remember thinking, and I remember writing... I mean, it sounded so great. People think it's Kyle playing, dude. Dude, facts. <laughs> That's a compliment. Which Kyle is like the best trumpet player in all of in, LA yeah, County. He's the guy. Dude. He's the guy. So that's awesome to hear. And I forget that sometimes because, you know, I'm always all down on myself with my horn playing. Dude. Because my chops aren't what they were. You know, speaking you of know? teachers that uh, let us down and mm. uh, motivated us to do better. Wait, what teacher were we speaking of that? Speaking Your of? Your college teacher? Oh, facts. Yeah, yeah, Okay, yeah. keep going. I live and breathe to prove my high school teacher wrong that said I wasn't going to amount to nothing. Hey. So thank you. Thank you for pro- uh, avoiding me. No, no, um, no, no. Motivating. Motivating me. <laughs> She's like, yeah, stupid. Motivation. Motivation. And motivation. When, wow. the, when the horn solo finally started coming, I wrote it in eight bar phrases. Because, you know, my fucking hip hop ass, I just hear stuff. Yeah. And I remember the, like, <laughs> the, the order of what you hear those loops on the album was not what we recorded. We ended up moving some stuff around because I felt like it wasn't going forward. It would take like steps back and forward. So I remember yeah. Demo and I, shout out Demo, been there for both albums. El Señor Moncayo. Yeah, Moncayo. Del Chuco, Texas. I remember us deciding and like I, I was like, hey man, can you move this here, here, there? And dude, that, I forget. I'd love to talk about that mixing or i'm sorry editing that album was nuts dude i can't i can't demo how many hours would you say bro that was he's a lot not, he's not here <laughs> no, he's watching though oh. he's at home and, and he's going oh it was he's, a lot dude. He's you know I mean? for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah and what we did was when we mixed it with mark needham which we'll get into next i remember he used this software <laughs> where i got to hear his outs from his mix board with like literally a half a second delay dude so he would call me he would call me and we would just mute each other when we were going to play because he would press play we'd hear it and then we'd give notes and then as we'd give notes he'd fix them right there on the spot dude and i was actually uh mike and ray will never hear this i was actually at work when i was at the drop back then and i remember mark being like oh wait 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 i got ahead of myself what was i talking about before mark I don't know, but I just broke the bottle opener. <laughs> <laughs> James, if you have a bottle opener, we, we could really use that. <laughs> what was I talking Mark, about before the Mark, mixing? Mark I don't want to talk about Mark Needham yet. There's something before. Uh, the French horn? Talked about the French horn. James, are you listening? <laughs> well, I don't remember. Um, it's all right. We'll come back to it. <laughs> um, well, no, editing. Editing oh, was editing. super. Yeah, editing. Doing, so doing Mark David. Yeah, yeah. sent his outs like that. So what D1 and I did. Mm. Edit that part <laughs> out so it doesn't look like we paused for so long. <laughs> yeah. So I remember um, Demo would send his outs and we would Zoom each other. And we both saw, I could see his like Pro Tools. Mm-hmm. I could see both screens from his mixer board to the fucking editing window. And we would FaceTime each other too with headphones on. So we would put earbuds on and then put our headphones like these, like monitor headphones. Yeah. We'd put them over the headphones Uh. so that we could be FaceTiming each other and hear each other in the headphones. And at the time, I remember um, we would end up doing it late sometimes and Tara always worked early. Yeah. So I would try to sit there and be real quiet so Tara wouldn't wake up. (laughs) So I would have headphones on with Demo, FaceTime him, wear these, and I could hear his outs while on Zoom watching his Pro Tools. Mm. Highly recommend, guys. It's 2022. Technology is at our fucking fingertips. And, bro, everything we did was like that. Because he was in El Paso. Right. Remember? Yeah. Dude, I, I, I wish I could fathom. 100 hours? 150? I don't know. I don't think you used fathom correctly. To seem like... <laughs> it. Yeah, but no, I, I know what you're saying. Yeah, fuck yeah, dude. I remember you guys were staying up late nights. Yeah, the editing was fun. And that song, though, once again, came together very easily. Yo, how even, cool. even going through the takes of your vocals yeah. and editing those to make them come together. Well, that's why exactly why the lyrics are so simple, Andy, <laughs> because I wanted to sing it okay, you know, so that motherfuckers wouldn't come up. You know, everyone's a critic. <laughs> that's facts. <laughs> Everyone is a critic, yeah. dude. I don't see you doing something with your life. <laughs> oh, and you know what else I'd like to mention? Hmm. <laughs> I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> sorry, sorry. No, no. It's it's <laughs> <laughs> what were you saying? <laughs> Before you said people aren't doing shit with their lives. Oh yeah, mom, um, you should do something with your oh, life. Oh oh oh, uh, the editing your vocals. Oh yeah. Well everything, and you know, we actually recorded all of the guitars in our living room in Compton. That was a lot D of fun, huh? Bro, Demo, remember he drove over with his mobile studio. Mm -hmm. He set up his racks. He brought a mobile desk. He brought his Adams, which that was the first time I used Adam monitors. And I was like, oh, bro. He brought a Tele this, too because I'm a, I'm a big, like, I prefer Strat. But for some reason, Demo's always like, get a fucking Tele, son. And I'm like, I don't know. So he brought his Tele and we played with both of them. We had like three guitars to play with, dude. It was like. And he brought, oh, at the time, I had just gotten approved through Guitar Center for all the universal audio plugins, bro. I got all of them for free as a trial because I was a Guitar Center employee. So he had the fucking, what did he have? He had like the satellite. He's answering me as he's watching. He's like, I tell him my equipment. Mm -hmm. But we used all those universal audio plugins. We like, we had takes of just raw guitar. We had a take of a uh, fucking API burned into it. We ran them through it. And we used, remember, we used all the trials for everything. Yeah. Dude. It was so sick. Yeah. And remember on the, <laughs> bro, technology, he had his Mac right here, right? Mm -hmm. And then he airplayed it to the fucking 70 inch TV in the living room. So I sat on the couch while staring at his Pro Tools, and he was on the computer, and then you sat and recorded. Yeah. And can you tell us the classic story of... Uh, -ni -ni, 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 -ni. The what was on? <laughs> yeah. The what was on? Is yeah. that where it started? Yeah. The what was on? Because oh, remember, and then he put the song, and it was like... Oh, what was on, yeah. Baby, ooh, how, how does the song even go? Like, I'm singing it, bro. I don't think you're singing it correctly. Yeah, yeah. yeah? Every time I look around... I see How bizarre. Face. How bizarre. What was on? What was on? So, um... I am not the brightest child in this fucking place. <laughs> and sometimes I leave my um, <laughs> effect pedals on before the recording starts. And it kind of, uh, when you have your wah pedal on, sometimes... But you had it all the way down. Too. Yeah, I had it all the way down. So that, that means that the uh, treble is a, little, is a little high and stingy, you yeah, know? Stingy. <laughs> yeah, stingy. Stingy. And sharp yeah sharp is the right word i guess yeah and he kept leaving you kept leaving it on dude well we smoke a lot of weed andy so <laughs> sometimes i forget things you know man imagine, but i kept leaving it on dude yeah. imagine we could have counted how much weed we smoked from when we started recording the album throughout the mixes i think if we did that somebody would tell us to go to rehab <laughs> not, not even but um yeah no it was um it just became this like inside joke because i kept leaving my wall on so he kept saying the wall was on because he would do a take and we'd be like <laughs> Something's wrong. And he's like, no, nothing. I played it just like always. And Demo was like, I don't know. The levels are weird all of a sudden, bro. And then Gil would look down and go, oh, my wall was on. And, and he like, just kept saying wall was on. And, and then it the sounded like that song. the time of you saying it. <laughs> it sounded like that song, right? Wall was on, wall was on, wall was on. Because that helped us save a lot of money, dude. And every time I look around. Shout out to Rob at Light Black is where we did all the drums did we do all the bass there? Yeah, because I used his bass. Yeah, I used his bass. Guys, I'm a pussy. Active pickups, and baby. I got a whole album. Mm. I used the five string, but I couldn't figure out the fifth string, so I had him take it off. So it was a five string with just four strings. We were on, on a time limit. We were on a time limit. It's expensive <laughs> Have you ever paid for a studio? studio. <laughs> yeah, it's expensive to be here right now. Again, do something with Actually, you know what? No, No Pulp Media has fantastic prices and nice. fantastic service yeah shout out to no pulp media for putting this together we did our uh album release party here it was so much fun huh it was fun but we were bro i would say out of all the we've spent 17 birthdays together and the most gil has ever got me fucked up was before my 29th birthday i a top three most drunk i've ever oh the night before and the night oh, before the dude, album we party, took some shots man we got fucked up dude yeah and you know what to bring it all together we did the silent disco and dude, I remember when those when La Chica first started mm -hmm. and the quality that people heard mm -hmm. through those headphones. Yeah. I remember looking, because we were up here and there was the crowd. Remember everyone just like, It was kind of a sight to see, dude. Everyone looked at each other like And it was intimate. It wasn't like there was three hundred fucking people here, you know. It was a it was a a high end ticket price. And only a few people that were lucky got allowed to come in. Yeah. And it was really nice to see um just everyone everyone that we fuck with uh like get excited as soon as that first note came in you know yeah dude 
And dude, how cool was it to go to Los Feliz with Mark? And you know what? That's exactly. I'm so glad you brought that up because that's where I'd like to lead. Los Feliz so, is a neighborhood in LA, um, commonly known as Los Feliz, <laughs> but it's Los Feliz. <laughs> um, Mark Needham mixed that song. And Mark Needham is a fucking legend. Maybe we shouldn't be saying where he stays, huh? <laughs> I think it's on Google, dude. Okay. They found where Drake lives, you know what I mean? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember when we first took this, you know, huge step to making this album and putting as much fucking time and effort and money that we did into this shit. Remember, <coughs> I told you, I was like, bro, we need some fucking solid ass mixing. Yeah. And like, no disrespect towards Demo. Demo was one of the first ones. Like, hell yeah. Dude, I mean, he still makes shit. like three songs in our album. No, he, I think he did more. Mm -hmm. I think he did more, but he brought that up. He was like, dude, find a really good fucking mixer. And I went online and I hunted and I sent a lot of emails and someone replied to it. And then I asked him, I said, hey, bro, I'm looking for a mixer, but I need the best of the best. Now, I knew the rate was going to be crazy and probably weren't going to go with it. Yeah. But I wanted to start fishing to know what is that rate? You know what I mean? Yeah. What's that step of what is, what is the best of the best charge? And this fool, Andrew Brightman, who managed countless bands if you look him up, he replied and said, Oh, I got a guy that you would not believe. His name is Mark Needham. Look him up. Get back to me. So I looked him up, and just like this, I popped up his Wikipedia. Handsome fella. And I clicked, and let me, just, let me just read this first part. It says, Mark Needham is an American music engineer, mixer, and producer. He has worked with many prominent names in the music, including Blue October, New Boys, Fleetwood Mac, The Killers, Imagine Dragon, Chris Isaac, John Hyatt, Michelle Branch, Pink, OAR, Neon Tree, Shakira, Pete Yorn, Block Party, Elton John, Stevie Nicks, Starbender, and others. Shakira was Texas. And bro, <laughs> if you scroll down to his fucking, like, uh, his discography, like, this motherfucker. I remember when I saw that, I was like, all right. Oh, and as I read more into it, he, I don't remember exactly, I don't want to tell the wrong story about how he's, he helped the killers get on. But he for sure did Mr. Brightside. So every time you hear Mr. Brightside... That song and La Chica have Mark Needham in common. And when I, when I looked it up and I replied and I was like, fuck yeah, dude, we'd like to work with this guy. And of course, you remember at the beginning of that journey, that was kind of also right when I was like getting promoted and I met mm -hmm. Aaron. Mm -hmm. and I really started kind of trying to grow up and change the way I handled our business. <coughs> yep. <coughs> I remember replying very professionally mm -hmm. and said, I'd love to know more information. And yeah. he goes, yeah, so why don't you meet at Mark's house? And we'll talk. And I was like, oh, shit. That's okay. when you went by yourself? That, that was when I looked at you guys and I was like, hey, dude, I'm going to go to this initial business meeting. I'm going to see what it's about. And I'll come report to us. And he gave me this address. And when I showed Gil, because, bro, I've been a Rosecrans boy for nine years, dude. Like, I don't go to L.A. I don't fucking. I had no business over there until I started working. And I have explored this beautiful county. So when I showed Gil where it was, he was like, oh, shit, you're going to some nice ass shit and I when i pulled up that was some nice ass shit but i remember being so nervous because as soon as i turned and i saw what you meant with these kind of houses i'm in my little fucking pickup truck gold ass little tacoma let's and be I, honest you look like a bean <laughs> oh i looked like a straight i, I look like this feels too late to be cleaning you know yeah. what's here for i didn't have a ladder in the back he's trying to collect his money <laughs> <laughs> so i i pulled up mr and george I, and i i i texted mark because I got told and I, I was like, hey, I, I think I'm here. And I, I park and I'm kind of standing outside and I'm kind of nervous. And <coughs> this dude comes out and he goes, Andy? I was like, Mark? He goes, bro, pull in my driveway, dude. And I'm like, what? So I back my little truck up into his driveway and he's like, come on in, dude. It's great to meet you. So we walk in and, bro, he's got this slate board, which, is, oh, bro, is top of the line shit. <coughs> I mean, I looked around and there's pictures of him. <coughs> I mean, just all these big names, dude. The first one to come to my head, and it must have been because of her chichis, because I must have looked multiple times. But he had that picture with Dolly Parton. Oh yeah. I, but bro, there was hella. There was hella, and he was just the nicest dude. Mm. He was like, "Oh shit, what's up, Andy? Man, I'm so excited to work with you." Blah blah. Like, I checked. Uh, the, um, Andrew was saying this and that or whatever. And I'll never forget. And this was something that I took with me forever now with business. I brought up. Yeah, you know, I'm really excited. I know he said there's a contract to look over and, and what the price would be. And he goes, oh, no, no. He's like, I, I, don't, I don't deal with that. He goes, I'm in this business to make music. He's like, I let Andrew handle the business. Like, ah, so. so I was like, oh, okay, cool. 
So Andrew gets there, you know, and all three of us are kicking it. Everyone's shaking hands, and you know, he's telling me stories about his shit and all the legendary career he's had. And then we start kind of just talking, you know. It was so casual, it was so comfortable. And know that in the back of my head, I'm trying so hard to not look like a little fucking Mexican kid off the streets. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, so I'm, I'm trying to... And, but I'm still being myself. You know me. I'm still trying to be myself. And The streets. <laughs> and at that point, he started asking about our band and what our goals were. And not, not so black and white, you know, but it was what the conversation came. Mm-hmm. And I remember one of the first things that made me feel good about the rest of the thing was when we started responding well to each other he was like oh you're young but i could tell you've already you, you got an idea and i was like yeah thank god so well you are really good at talking to people and that was a challenge for me let's suck that andy's was... dick for a quick second <laughs> well things you're good at talking to people so, look 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 selling stuff i fucking um making me horny <laughs> okay go ahead sorry <laughs> at that point i remember the contract came up, and I had asked Felicia, shout out, who is from Las Cruces. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I met I her randomly, that. and I remember she was actually going to come with me because I was a little nervous because mm. she did all that shit with fucking at the driving and Mars Volta and stuff. Pussy boy. And I remember when she looked at the <laughs> at the contract, she kind of explained to me what it meant about points and you know what, if we got a placement, blah, blah, blah. And she was like, that seems fair for the caliber of what he is. And I don't want to just put numbers out there because it might be outdated, and I don't put the dude's price but bro his price was expensive like you know how you pay it was top dollar it was top dollar i'm not even gonna say anymore it was top dollar and luckily as we talked more and he knew There's i no wasn't good for it. It i was didn't have a dollar. one of the questions was if we had a label blah blah blah. people i said now we're 100 percent independent you know we're looking to own our own publishing company fucking own our masters you know send this blah blah blah. And I, I have to stop you right there you just we have a genre we are independent. We are indie music. <laughs> Anyways, right, continue. Right. So um, that was when he said it all, and I and I don't. Well, maybe I looked at it before, but I remember we I agreed to it then. No, yeah, because I signed the contract today, so mm-hmm. we had seen him, found the raid, and all agreed. Like, fuck it, let's go for the gold. It was the first song on the album we were gonna mix. We had just spent all this fucking money on recording. And, edit, uh, and editing, so now it's time for mixing. And We've basically been bleeding money out for the past two years, dude. I, I don't want to say it on the podcast, but like when people ask and I give a ballpark of what our number is, they're like, what? Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, bro, it's a year's salary. But it's so, I mean, shit, dude, I'd rather spend my money on that than yeah, other what, things. Yeah, fucking know? bullshit. Yeah. And hopefully, in particular, this song, which is the most expensive song on the fucking album, you hear the quality, dude. I guess I should have written better lyrics if it was so expensive, huh? Nah, you know, yeah. <laughs> and and that's kind of what I've taken with. I know people who have been following. We've been getting you know placements here and a little buzz there, and and that was a huge part. And I remember Demo telling me like, "Bro, hiring someone like Mark Needham, the name comes with it." Mm-hmm. So when we fucking send when I when I send these emails to the to the labels and the radio stations and blah 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I, I name drop. Like, that's why we paid for it, you know? I'm like, oh, I want to send you over a song off our new album with a combined mixers of six, 16 Grammy nominations, two-time mm-hmm. Grammy winner. The song is La Chica, mixed by Mark Needham, and I put, I, I don't remember what I put. I think I put The Killers. I, I picked three good names, and I stuck to those. And then you I won't did. get into mastering on this podcast, but I put the mastering engineers and how he won Grammys and who he worked with. And that is what has really got us a lot of success, dude, was that we were willing to invest in ourselves with the little money we fucking had. Mm-hmm. And, bro, all the sex we've been getting, I don't want to admit it to that because obviously the song's good. Yeah. But we, they looked at it. They gave it a chance because we were able to drop these names that we worked with because yeah. it was like, now nah, these fools are serious. You know? Yeah, La Chica, bro. Great, a, a great one. start to the album. And I, I remember that was the first one we all got. And that was that's what set the tone. And let's be honest, man. There's two things that you and me love the most, and that's beer and bitches. The two Bs. The three Bs. Beer, bitches, and bud. No disrespect to women. We just love bitches. <laughs> what? I don't know, dude. <laughs> Edit that out. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Leave it in. Uh, you want to move on to the, the skit, or do you want to... Yeah, I think so. Anything else I you want to say about no, La Chica? No, no. Not that I can think of. That was tight. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, that's a good song. Salud, bro. Salud. Do you have a bottle opener? Yep. Oi, gang! Who wants to watch the Chamber of Secrets? The Chamber <laughs> of Secrets is on next, all aboard the Hogwarts Express. Hmm, can we stop there real quick? How did you come up with that script? You know, man, that is a that is really funny, dude. Bro, I don't remember what triggered it, but I knew that it had to be Harry Potter related so that it could lead into that. Mm. And I think about over all the years how much Ooh. we would quote fucking Jim Carrey movies and Yes Man. In particular. Which is a deep quote. It's from Yes Man. Watch yeah. it again. And we're quoting Norm, as we both know. And Kyle's a pretty just, short name already. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, yeah, please continue. <coughs> the skit we actually recorded in the bedroom. <laughs> Remember we What else did we do in the bedroom, Andy? <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, we that did. That exact mic we borrowed from Rob. Yeah, we did. And we did that in the bedroom, dude. Oh, we did. Mm. And the hardest part was getting the beer close enough. Cause we were, we had to open a good amount of beers to get it as close as possible to us. I know people are thinking it shouldn't have been that hard, but you try opening a beer at the same time as your buddy. <laughs> it was hard, dude. It's pretty hard, man. And you know what, guys? Listen to that with headphones, full blast. There is a little. Back to us. There is a little excerpt in there, really, really that we really, really want you to hear. Yeah. That we did just for everybody. Oh, now, Gri now Gryffindor. Yeah, let's, can, can we uh, hear that? Which is a fan favorite, by the way. Let's let's run into Gryffindor, dude. I think of Juan. Nice. Juan loves this song, dude. Wingardium Leviosa, motherfucker. I know, I almost edited it out. <laughs> that too. <laughs> Uh, live podcast things? No, he decided to see the studio space. Nice. Mm. I love this shit, dude. Mexican reggae. Shout out, Greg. I am um <laughs> I make my dick hard. This is the first time I ever used face distortion. It's cool. Huh? That I know of. Nah. This little French horn shit was at the studio. Oh, that's the one? There's a few. No. French one can make that sound.
Man, what a song. Yeah, that's definitely a good You kind of wrote that one, right? I mean, we, we, we like, were together, but like, yeah, yeah. You, you, you know, came up with the concept, guys, right? we always write songs together, but someone brings something to the table. That one, I will actually always put in the category of like a solid 50-50, dude. Yeah, but how do we just say, let's write a song about Harry Potter. Uh, <laughs> I think it was a joke. Oh, yeah? I think we like, like fucking pendejos, like always. Like, like we're just drunk and talking like, yeah, shit. Let's fucking talk about Harry Potter, and we did. That's actually, dude, Cause I such remember, a great song. I remember I came into you first just going, boom, boom. Boom, 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 and I tapped my foot like it's just a kick drum, right? You can hear. Just, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. And he was like, "Yeah, fuck yeah!" And it built on that, and that, that in my opinion, bro, is a great idea of what our band is. I think so, man. It has so many twists and turns. It's kind of like, man. Hey, you get a little bit of everything, dude. Exactly. You start off with this fucking... Sorry, I think maybe that should have been the first song. Kind of rock part. No, 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 because you know what? The first song draws them in. Because uh, yeah. with that with that initial hardness and stuff, not everybody likes that. Nah, you're right. You know? They're going to think we're a metal... No. <laughs> Hard rock, no. Um, hair metal, no. Dude, we actually... Remember we got booked for a, like a nice paid gig in K-Town. Korea. not our scene. Town. And after... This was the last song we did. And I remember afterwards when the dude was paying us, I asked him, I was like, hey, so what do you think of our band? He was like, man, twists and turns. Mm. He goes, I think I heard four genres in that last song alone. Mm. And yeah, it has like a, like it starts off with like a hard rock feel, and then it goes into like a reggae, mm -hmm. ska feel. You know, like a ska feel, I guess. And then, what do you say then for the a kids? reggae feel. And, it, and that's what we always do, bro. Sometimes when we write shit like that, we're like, that is for the motherfuckers who want to run around. It's always fun to see people running around like maniacs when, to our music yeah. and not hurting each other. Look, I'm all for a nice slam, you know, but I like a nice mosh where no one's getting hurt. That, oh, you know what, bro? That Take song to the in mic. particular, that song in particular, uh, percussion editing. Was which, that the one that which was? Which also was there in the first one as well. Like, yeah, I'm busy, dude. <laughs> um, the Latin percussion obviously is in a lot of it. Listen to the album, there's a shitload of Latin percussion. Yeah. I remember us deciding on that. Greg actually came in. For the whole album and did all that shit in Mr. this Anderson. one little session, dude. We put the songs on and he just fucking he just went. Remember? He is a beast, dude. Yeah, he is a beast. And bro, all free, but like just sight reading. He just mm -hmm. did what he felt. Yeah. And I remember that in particular took a lot of money. Well, you guys, you and Demo edited a lot of those uh, percussion stuff, huh? All of it. Bro, that shaker is very subtle, but when you hear it on the headphones, it's so fucking. You know what? Good. In the mastering, it jumped out, dude. Yeah. It jumped out. No, I'm, it's, yeah. it's supposed to be like in the back, but like, dude, when you hear it, when you start paying attention, yeah. you hear it, you're like, ooh. Dude, there's a lot going on. The whole album, That's I think that's what <clears throat> made it an album. Yeah. You know what I mean? It wasn't just three instruments anymore, which I'm not taking away from that. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying we finally, we, we thickened our, yeah. thickened the shit out of that shit. We have guitar text behind the curtains, Thick, dude. Thickened that shit out, dude. Thickened it. Slurpy. But yeah, the editing on that one for percussion was definitely a time. Like, Demo spent hella time trying to get... Because, you know, he's trying to quantize and, and get things in time, but there's mm -hmm. these rhythms that obviously a computer can't quite mm -hmm. figure out. So we had to try to keep it loose enough where it still felt natural, but in time. And you know Demo's a perfectionist with getting shit. Oh, I mean, so, are, so are you, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I'm sure two perfectionists working together is kind of... A, I keep hitting the table and it makes that boom. Yeah. <laughs> uh, two perfectionists trying to work on something together and it's, it's going to take some time. Yeah, and you know what? Luckily, he's all he's been our big homie for so many years yeah. that it was like, oh, okay, I'll hear. I'll he's always, easy, he's really I'll easy to work act, with. And he's so easy. He's really fun to work dude. with. He always makes me feel comfortable and, Rob, and like Rob I'm in a safe too, place. Bro. Yeah, same. The way that they just talk to you and give you advice. I mean, shit. Like, even Ty. When we'll get into the next songs later, but when he was helping me with some vocals, yeah, he was very cool about not yeah. like making me feel like I was a piece of being shit. belittled or something. Because you know? I remember us talking about it and I texted him and I was like, hey bro, we're going to record vocals this day, this day, this day. Can you just come kick it? Mm -hmm. And we brought, I guess, yeah, like Ty Loki was like a tech on that. Yeah, for sure. He through all those vocals. He was a tech on that. Because yeah. even when we bar out and other songs and stuff, we had everyone in there telling us like if there was a sloppy bar or if we should do this and that. Yeah, that's It's a good cool point. thing how many people helped us out, huh? Bro, it was a huge, it was a long process. It took yeah. us almost fucking a year and nine months, I believe, is the exact time. Yeah. That's a long From time, From start to release date? From start to release. Nice. I believe it was one year and nine months. So that's what? Uh, how many months? That's how long it takes to write a jazz album. <laughs> what? That's how long it takes to write a, write, uh, a jazz album? Thank you. <laughs> jazz Bye. hands. Yeah, Gryffindor was tight, dude. Gryffindor uh, is a really tight song. I, I think that 
since we were kids, we always wrote songs that went boom, 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 boom. Yeah. And I remember actually in the first album, there was a time where Demo was like, you guys should write a bridge. You should write something to do this. Mm-hmm. And we were both like, nah, bro, we want that shit to like, like if your dick comes out and it's kind of hard already, it's like, boom. Yeah. yeah. That's what we want Flaccid. with our music. <laughs> not, not quite, you know, like yeah. a chubber. Oh, a chubber. Yeah. Like you're trying to show it off, but you're not music. trying to look too yeah, excited. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, time. <laughs> look, look at me. You don't want to disrespect her, but you don't want to look like a yeah, creep. Like a, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And that song has that. Yeah, for sure. Dude, um, what was your favorite Harry Potter movie? My favorite Harry Potter movie? Yeah. I can't lie to you, dude. Which was the one that like just made you feel it the better, the uh, most. I can't lie to you, bro. It's Goblet of Fire. Goblet of Fire is a good one, I man. I love Goblet of Fire. Goblet of dude. Fire is a really good one. Oh, I'm glad we're doing this. Yeah. Because <laughs> the song's about Harry Potter. Right, right, yeah. And my brother, by the way, who Loved grew up it. with Harry Potter just like all of us, mm-hmm. he says, bro, that's become my favorite song on the album. And he said, the more that I hear what you guys are saying... Mm-hmm. That shit's like some dope ass bars about fucking. He didn't use those vernacular. Right. My brother's. It wasn't verbatim. Texas. He was like, "That's a great song, bro." <laughs> Old buddy. <laughs> I love your brother, dude. I'm glad he liked that song because yeah, yeah, it's um, it's definitely if you're a Harry Potter fanatic, it's it's a. Uh, it's deep, dude. It's a deep cut. And we were we were really excited. Actually, you know what? Well, we do I love Harry say, Potter. I would say that was one of the first songs that we wrote so lyrically, mm-hmm. so. Uh, yeah, co-existingly. together. Existingly. Usually we bring each other something or one of us harmonizes on the others, but yeah. that one we wrote. Because people are always saying how shitty our lyrics are that we yeah. are very self-conscious yeah, about it. but you so. know what? That was one of those where we tried to elevate. For and sure. And I was saying during the song, I'm glad I, we say shit out loud. That was when classes <laughs> had gotten kicked up. They were in their old room. Mm. And of course, you know, I, I helped them out a little bit. And Anthony and Jordan and fucking Eric were like, bro, whenever you guys need anything, come through. Mm. Whenever anything come through. So I remember asking him because me personally, which you know very well, I hate doing work shit at home, dude. I hate it. I've never been good. I don't like practicing at home. I don't want to work from home. Yeah. Like, doing the Zoom shit for the lessons at home sucks. Like when I'm at work, I want to work. When I'm at home, I want to chill. So it, I understand yeah. why eventually it'd be nice to get a studio, like we like we said, where we could go somewhere. Our shit's always set up. Everything's ready to record. It's just boom. You walk in, it's done. So what the fuck? There's a monkey. You heard that? That was laughter. <laughs> I don't think that was a monkey. <laughs> that might have been my laughter. <laughs> um, a studio, a place to go. Yeah, because you hate working at home. Yeah. You're working from home. Um, <laughs> just that working from home. Sucks, no, no, we're talking about. Oh, so we asked Anthony, like, hey, oh, yeah, classes. can we come in and work on this song? So what we did is we got in there and remember we tracked mm-hmm. a rough thing of the of the verse. And we asked him to just loop it loud. And I remember he just kicked back with his feet up, cranked it up for us. And we sat there with a pen and a pad. <laughs> this motherfucker was reading a and book. <laughs> I, he was. He was. And, and I think you and I just pitched bars back and forth so we found something dope. Because I, I, I think I only read until Order of the... F- I'm sorry. What's after um, Goblet of Fire? Is Order of the Phoenix. The, yeah, the Order of the Phoenix. That was where... I stopped reading and I remember you took that and that shit. was actually my favorite one my favorite book really? not my favorite movie but my favorite book, book. Order of the Phoenix is when Harry Potter starts kind of rebelling yeah. and when being he's like, like a wait little a prick he's like, he, starts, he starts showing, I'm my dad he, no he starts showing those sides of Voldemort that he has oh, he's, starting to- he's starting to fucking freak out and it's really fucking cool man honestly like I'm a little disappointed you need some help there, partner? Yeah, please, part, help me out. Uh, <laughs> I've partner never me called up. you partner. That's weird. <laughs> I hurt my thumb, dude. <laughs> it's a very, um, it's a, it's a damn shame what they did to the Half Blood Prince, dude. Because the Half Blood Prince is also a really great book. Not that the movie isn't good, the movie's great. But goddamn, that book was. That's when you fall in love with Professor Snape. Yeah, that was the point. Yeah, but man, Harry Potter, dude. Yeah, and you know what? I think a lot of people forget how enormous it was to our culture of our age group. Yeah, dude. Everyone, like everyone in our age group, fucked with Harry Potter, dude. Dude, and a woman wrote that, and this is back in the time when women weren't allowed to write. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Blair Witch. Yeah. <laughs> no, Salem. Salem Witch Trials. Trials. Yeah, Blair Witch is a movie. <laughs> Or is that yeah. the guy that yeah, no, kills no. vampires that is also a vampire, <laughs> but it's like... That's uh, Van Helsing. Does he kill vampires because he's a black vampire? So he's like, oh, fuck these other Blade? vampires? Yeah. Oh, Blade. Oh, you should watch Blade, dude. He's a Marvel character. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Wesley Snipes. The more you know. 
The less you read. <laughs> okay, are we done with Gryffindor? Yeah. We talked about Harry Potter. Is there anything else I want to talk about that? Because that's a killer song. Who mixed that oh, song? Oh, by the way, dude. No, oh. The Rob. Rob mixed Rob, that song. Yeah, shout I out to always Rob. want to mention who mixes it. Rob mixed that song for us. Mm-hmm. And the funnest and most challenging part for us was getting the percussion mm. in the mix. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the hardest part. And I know Rob's style is usually more rock, and he can do a little bit of everything. But I remember both of us, as we heard the masters back, mm. like, oh, I sound a little different to the mix. Not that we were unhappy with it, right. but it's always nice. And those who mix, you understand, like, your mix is going to sound different. Hey, you know? real quick, to get not not to get away from our, our album, but we got to give a shout out to Rob, dude, because that Roma Part album is oh, amazing. Yeah, I'm actually a little jealous of how it came out. That sounds really good, dude. I've been all thinking of, of, all of the mixes Rob did for us don't sound as good. I've as been Roma thinking Parts. of those songs from Roma Part. You guys should listen to Roma Part if you haven't Bro, already. That is my favorite band, dude. They're dope, and yeah. those songs get stuck in my fucking head, dude. I'm at work. <laughs> Mike Tyson. I'm at work. <laughs> <my head. laughs> sound like Mike Tyson. <laughs> Not bad. Hey, shout out to Mike Tyson. We love you. He's oh, a yeah. champ. You're the best, dude. Please don't rate me. <laughs> It's an old it's an old interview with him. He's not like that anymore. Oh, I'm getting cramped in my ass. Oh. Okay, I'm good. What were you saying? Um Roma Part is dope, dude. Oh dude. But back to our <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Wait. So Yeah, we gotta just give a second to because Rob Roma Part and Rob did a great job. We just recorded at the studio and then Rob was like, Hey, I might need some help with like just some extra hands. Can you come through? I'm recording this band, we're gonna do an album. And I was like, oh, fuck yeah. And I remember I got there and they were in the big room. And I met him in the control room and they have the cameras where you can see what's going on. Mm-hmm. And, I, and they're, they're tracking. And bro, I'll never forget. I stood there and I'm, look, I'm not going to say I'm an asshole. If I don't like shit, I don't like shit. Mm-hmm. That's just how it is. I'm not going to sit there and be a piece of shit. I'm also not going to be fake and, and blow steam up your ass. But there's things that I like and there's things I don't like. For sure. And... That makes you In a human. In particular, you know me more than a lot. I listen to mostly hip hop. Right. So there's not a lot of rock bands that I like. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a very select few. Right. And the first time that I heard Roma Part, dude, fell in love, huh? I crossed my arms and I stood there and I was like, I mean, Ryan's voice is pretty undone. And I remember I looked, I looked over at Rob, and Rob was like, I know. He's like, bro, you guys should fucking tour together. And mark my words. Roam apart, we will tour together, dude. And we don't have to go in the same van because I, I know we get, uh, it'd be hard to be with us for a long stinky. period of time. <laughs> but, bro. Hey, and Alex, I, the think, day I, heard I think 1333 is a very clever name. Me for too, bro. <laughs> let's, let's comment on that because, <laughs> hey, motherfuckers. Oh, bro, bro. Hey, the bros over here. You guys. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> What's Hark is next? Show me to your leader. I think it's Funkmaster, dude. Dude. That, um,. Before we even play this song real quick, is it Funkmaster? I think so. Okay, before we even play it, um... No, it's a voicemail. Oh, it's the voicemail. So it's perfect. We can do the voicemail, laugh about the voicemail, finish up being call stupid it up and there. call it... Okay, cool. You heard that, James? Yeah. Let me take this fun hat off. No, I'm going to leave no, it No, on. no, leave it I on. I like this Just hat. Just for a moment. Voicemail time. Listen here, you little motherfucker. This is little close for you, little motherfucker, because this is the third time I erase this message and try to fix it. Tell you exactly how I feel about you not answering my phone call after we got off the phone 15 goddamn minutes ago. 15 goddamn God minutes God. ago. What are you doing? What's her name? What's her name, motherfucker? Chill up. Toxico. Anyways, uh, call me back. If you'd like to leave a fact, it's 310 <laughs> Otherwise, and as always, go fuck yourself. That's a quote. That's a quote. Yes, it is. Traffic Thunder. Traffic Thunder. Guys, that was a real voicemail. How long just, ago did I, I send you that voicemail, dude? How long have you been holding on to that voicemail for the no perfect idea, timing? Dude. I don't know. I don't know how iPhone lets you hold shit and as also, long as it does. Do you but... know how many of our friends, our, our closest friends, which is not many, um, are not trying to send me voicemails all the time so that we put it on the next album? Sorry, Carlos. Not just Carlos. <laughs> Sorry, Carlos. Sorry, Phil. You know what? <laughs> I don't remember when that idea came up, too, where I looked at you. And I was like, hey, dude, I found some voicemails. I think it'll be fucking hilarious. I, I think, um. Because, I mean, it's classic hip hop shit, you know? Yeah, I Put think it was just like. Because we used to always leave each other voicemails back in the. Uh, like, we've left a lot of. Yeah, we're a little 13. older now. Nah, bro, we did it for fucking. Yeah, till like two years. Till like three years ago. And that was actually two movie quotes there. One of them was, again, Jim Carrey. Which one? The Grinch. Oh, you did go. <laughs> you quoted The Grinch. Yeah. We had to bleep your number out. 
please. I don't want these bitches calling me. 554-919-30. Try that number out. <laughs> it's not it. I don't know your number. Ask for uh, Bert Correa. Uh, Ernie will be there, too. Yes, yeah, ask for Ernie, too. His last name is Aguirre. Man, you know what? I know we're close to wrapping it up, but... I mean, dude, we got through two songs and two skits. That's good. That's good. I mean, Loki, if we did one more, we got five done, and then we can do the next five next time. Sure, yeah, let's listen to Funkmaster. Is that the next one? I think so. Can you, can you put that on for us, James? How fun was doing that video the other day? Bro, you know what? After a fun acid trip. We just... Okay, so check this. <laughs> Let me tell you a story before he plays the song. The last few music videos we did, which you guys know of, they were tight. They and were that, a lot of fun. And that one in particular, not, not bass three with Juan. That one was a lot of him, too. Because obviously I couldn't dictate the tricks and stuff. But but the first two music videos, <laughs> I kind of wrote out scene by scene of what I wanted, you know? I, I envisioned them in my head and they came to life. And he basically directed and produced the videos. He just some, had someone hold the camera, yeah? But this time around, I like to give and I was like, I'm just going to give an idea and let these fools, let's see what they got. These motherfuckers from... Oh, shit. Uh, Olympian films. Olympia. 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 Films. Olympia films, yes. Olympia. Sorry for forgetting. Olympia films. I forgot to tag him on the post yesterday. You piece dude. of I shit. I am a piece dude. of shit, dude. But, bro, so. We knew we were going to book these guys, and they were not cheap. We could pay for the last three videos with this one that we did for that these That meeting guys. with David, though, was good. Bro. Shout out to David. Judge of character. We had a meeting with this fool. And it was legit. Yeah, dude. The He's director, David, that motherfucker, just from the first vibes and everything, it was like, all right, we can work together. Because as you know, if you're watching this, you know who we fucking are. We can be a little much. You know, I can see how you could get sick of being with us. I, I Actually, I don't, but... <laughs> Me neither. We know that. <laughs> We're a catch. We want to make sure people know. And we... I, I don't care what people say, bro. We have found a line that is very hard to find. And that's why we're going to have a career. Because... Oh, wait, wait, wait. that's where we have a career. Facts. As professional as we are, doesn't sacrifice being as stupid as we are. No. In the fun way, together. Dude. Like, because we like being stupid with each other to make each other laugh our asses off. And the fact that we, I think that we can do that. Bro, let me suck your dick, dude. Please do. <laughs> right now? Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant metaphorically. Oh, oh my, 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 my. Metaphorically speaking, another Jim Carrey <laughs> All right, let's do the... Uh, let's hear Funkmaster. Oh, no, I didn't tell oh. the story. I oh, fucking yeah. <laughs> high ass. Um, David, we're working with them. So it's the we'll day before. The yeah, no, no. It's the day before the music video shoot. And Gil's little sister came into town, and we drank all day with her and her boyfriend. All fucking day. We drank IPAs all day. Dude, and drinking... Look, day drinking is fun if you're drinking, like, Mexican lagers or if you're drinking, like, Michelob Ultras because you're watching your weight, which, you know what? Fuck you if like you're going to talk Ultras. shit. But drinking IPAs... In the middle of the fucking day and just kind of chilling all day, like, she's gonna make we you lazy. We had a beer with son. breakfast, bro. Yeah, that's just gonna make you lazy, dude. Like, I love IPAs, but <clears throat> everything in moderation, right? Yeah. So we were we were faded, we were faded. Yeah, we were faded, dude. And we had two parties to go to. There was one at Gilmore for fucking uh, Eric's birthday. Shout out to Eric. And then there was the second party at Athena's house for Chippy's birthday. Shout out to Athena and Chippy. And we were like, yo, we're going to both these fucking parties. Who so do you think we are? We get to Gilmore. And Gil, you know Gil. Gil can hold his shit good. I can, I can too. But I'm littler. Bro, <laughs> I was fucked up. I think the and the first thing we did was hop into Kisera. If you remember. Well, I no, we went to Gilmore first. And, yeah, then, we and then we went to we went to. I hadn't been there in months. Yeah. So when I popped in, I remember Matias was like, let's <coughs> take a Or someone said, let's take a shot. It was me. Of course. <laughs> Bro, I shouldn't have taken that shot. Dude. Nah, we shouldn't have. I should not have taken that shot. Good thing we weren't when driving, I took huh? that shot, dude, we weren't? No, I was. <laughs> oh, I'm like, I knew it. So, I remember going back in Gilmore. I remember hugging Tara. I remember seeing Dakota, because they were both wearing onesies. Mm -hmm. And then I was on a couch. Mm. And then someone was like, do you want some punch? And I guess I was like, sure. No, no, no. They said, do you want some acid punch? You just didn't hear the word acid. Bro, I don't remember any of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I woke up on our couch and I jumped up and I was like, why the fuck didn't we go to the second party? So you took the acid punch at the Gilmore couch and then you woke up in the couch at our house. Yep, yep. And then you That's, I don't remember shit, dude. And then you woke up. I remember up. taking a shot, sitting on a couch, 
going like this with some punch, and then I woke up on next our thing couch. you know, we at home. Yes. And then you woke up pretty angry because we weren't at the next party. And you had you had just woken up, so you hadn't realized how fucked up we were. No. And yourself. I was upset. I was like, dude, we didn't go to a party. And then we told you why I, well, we Well, no, I remember turning, and you were like, bro, you were asleep in the car. Oh, so let me tell that part. So we, uh, you know, we're at Gilmore. We're, we're listening to Tara perform. And I see you go to the restroom and I see you walking away. And I know you, dude. I know <laughs> I my was boy. Fucked up, dude. And I was like, this motherfucker, <laughs> if he doesn't come out of that restroom in three, four minutes, I'm going to have to go check on him, dude. And you didn't. So I went to go check on you and you came out and I was like, hey, bro, you want to get out of here? And you were like, yeah. Bro, I don't remember any of that. <laughs> and you were like fucking drunk, dude. Yeah, and you were like, that, yeah. And I was like, all right, let's go. We didn't say bye to nobody, dude. Just, I said bye to like two people, I think. That, I that, was, that was the opposite from what you just said. Okay, I lied. I said bye <laughs> to two people and that was it. And um, the people on the way out. Yeah, no, well, yeah, people, yeah. And um, we took off. We sit in the car and I go, hey, where's the next party at? And you go, uh, fuck you or something. You know, you're like, Yo, hold on, I give that. Address. No, you were being. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Dude. You were talking shit, dude. I don't fucking think so. Yeah, well, maybe not. Sorry. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> and then you, you give me the address and I put it in my phone. It's on the way to the house, basically, but in Lakewood. And um, as we're driving, you immediately pass out. Immediately. You know me. Immediately you, know me, you pass out, dude. I could pass out anyway. And I look dude. at Serde from the rearview mirror, and I'm like, hey, um, we should probably just go home, huh? And Serde's like, yeah, dude, I'm kind of peaking already, so probably, huh? Oh, yeah, because everyone's doing acid. And he was like, and I was like, yeah, I should probably get us home before I start peaking. <laughs> and we're driving, still... Towards Athena's house. And I'm like trying to wake you up. Like, yo, yo, we're going to go to this party or what? We're going to go to this party or what? You would not wake up, I don't, dude. I, I you was, would not I wake up, dude. And dead, long story dude. short, we were just like, let's, let's just go home, dude. Yeah. Let's just go home and chill. So now I wake up on the couch and I look over and I'm all upset because we're not at the party. And, I'm like, and they're like, dude, if you can walk right now, we can go to the party. So I start walking. And as I start walking, I'm like, oh, fuck. And I remember I stopped, and you guys went, what's wrong? And I looked at the TV. Roger, and, Rick and Morty. And Rick and Morty was on. And I was like, am I tripping? And you guys were like, yes. You took acid. I said, I took acid? You haven't taken acid since we went to Vegas. I said, we did acid? And I ran to the restroom, and I looked at my pupils. And not like, just any kind of acid. There was 50 hits of acid in that punch, dude. There was 50 hits of acid in that punch. My pupils are like quarters, dude. <laughs> and I remember I ran back to you and I was like, bro, we have to film a music video tomorrow. So. And that's when all my realities came back. This, and I was like, oh, shit. I don't know if this podcast will be out before the music video. But when you see the music video, we all were fucked up the night before. Like, I, actually, you know what? I saw the rough edit today. How is it? We look fucked up, dude. Yeah. It doesn't look bad. But you can tell we look. I know, you us. know us. Yeah, we I saw some. Fucked you know how like here. he puts the the little. Bit oh, of, did you guys see Serra's newscast? Yeah, right. Yeah. Is that yeah. what you're gonna say? Yeah, when when he shows something of me, I saw it, and I, or, or no, it was one of Danny's pictures. I looked at one of Danny's <laughs> pictures, and I saw like all the veins <laughs> popping out of my neck as I was like pretending to sing. <laughs> and dude, I was like, oh man, you look like a little tweaker right now, son. Dude. With that being said, let's hear Funkmaster. With that being said, that's the music video. I don't know if it's out yet. If it is, we hope you like it. If it's not, you can fuck yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, give me some snare on that headphone. Hey, give me some. Ah. Uh. I got the massive appeal When bitches see me They with the panties I keep it real I'm a mama The realest in the media As my penis comes With no introduction Just like lava I'm gonna elevate you To your most greatest pleasure A real important lecture To satisfy you without measure Everything is give and take Baby girl you fuck to me I'll give you this great D Take you on this crazy voyage Have you feeling like you're floating in ecstasy But it's just me and my dick Coming at you from behind your bed And I can feel you Comics for days That's a I love this song But it just might not be me too. Honestly, it's a good song. It sucks that my sister hates it, but I guess it makes sense. A lot of people don't like it. That's why we put it towards the beginning. Anyway, are you in? It's a good filler song. Nah, it's like a, a, a gay. 
overnight. You can turn back. But the bitches call me daddy. Hit the flow, let me know if you wanna go gladly. DJ Quick reference. Two single friends all together, we can dip from here and attend a party in the pants in the trench. He's dead, heels long, yeah. He's on the way, they hit you drop into Terra's always like pants. You gotta leave the way. Homies have hands, got you drunk in the. It's funny because if Drake would have sang something like this, everybody would have loved it, huh? But since it's us, little beaners singing it. Don't get me started with key if you're looking for God forbid we love our dicks, you know? I'm giving bed springs non-stop money nine inch cock on gill It's the guns cock and gill love to spank so bring that ass this way if you're looking for that good dang Well endowed your favorite part right Eric's favorite part Actually the people that have told me that like this song that's their favorite part when the bass drops when the bass drops, when the bass drops I almost got a cramp again So girls keep the conversation Let them hit right now three dicks coming straight to your face I open night <laughs> a, a Dragon Ball Z reference too. Harry Potter, Dragon Ball Z. I mean, you could say we're kind of nerdy, dude. It's over 9, Except for we're good looking. Howdy, ma'am. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. Ooh, baby. Oh, yeah. You better ask somebody. <laughs> oh, that's it. <laughs> What's that from? Ohio players. Funky worm. It's over 9,000! It's over 9,000! Oh my god! It's over 9,000! Woo! Like if you don't think it's funny, I get why you don't like it, you know? It's funny. It's over 9,000! I'm being so serious. I mean, dude. Fuck it. Do you know how many people actually really know the Ohio players? So if people don't like this song, they just don't know good shit, dude. <laughs> Sorry. Like it. Like fuck's wrong with Yo, you? Yo, when we were gonna write that song, I think we literally looked at each other and we were like, let's write a horny ass boasting song. Oh yeah, dude. I think that was literally what we said. was like, let's just talk some shit and be sexy. And that's what we did and that's actually why people don't like that song. Because we are very cocky motherfuckers, dude. You and know you, know what? What? I, you know what? Fuck you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I guess it, like, it's like, oh, I see. Yeah, well. I mm. see why you don't like me. Dude, you know what? I'd rather be this type of person than somebody that is very um, timid and shy. You know? I like being a loud oh, motherfucker. It's my turn to kick the table. We've been doing back and forth quite a while. But you know what, dude? I, I Poor remember, James is going to have to do a lot of editing. Dude, I, <laughs> I remember thinking, like, when we were going to write that song. Uh, I was like, you know what? I don't want to look like a total douchebag. And Tara be like, oh, okay. You write this fucking horny ass song about your dick. So my so what did you sole do? intention was to write about my fuck your dick. Yeah. Almost Which is I. your dick. It's our dick, dude. Yeah, your dick is my dick, like, dude. I remember I was like, uh, so as you hear, I was just like, I'm going to boast the homie of, dude. Yeah. That's the song. You did. I you know I how got, much pussy I've got gotten one... since we started playing that song? <laughs> <laughs> Zero. <laughs> what about bussy? Well, the men do love me, dude. I, it's kind of nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you. Shout out to gay men for making me feel <laughs> we, special. We love you. <laughs> yeah. Um... Well, that, let's That's, talk about the song, dude. Uh, I mean, there's I'm really not much to, to say. No, it's, it's a, a song, song about dude. our dicks. Yeah. My sister doesn't like it, obviously. Um, my mom probably doesn't like it if she understood dude, English a little my, better. <laughs> my mom did not like it. Actually, both my parents did not like it. Well, let's say our parents are pretty Bro, conservative. I, re- <laughs> I remember she was like, why do you have to talk about your dicks all the fucking time? You know, she's not the only one that said that. You know what? It wasn't until we Maybe heard it. Maybe we shouldn't talk about I'm not, our dicks I'm not lying time. to you, bro. Do we talk about our dicks that much? I didn't think so. How many times I have you talked about our cocks think today? So, dude. Now, what sounds worse, cock or dick? Uh, let's let's cock. finish this right now. Cock. Let's, yeah, cock. Cock sounds worse. Okay. I'm not going to be like, hey, you like this cock? It's like, come on, bro. What if you've done a lot of drugs and then you just Dick like, and pussy go together. Dick and pussy go together. Cock, cock and, and cunt. Uh, but cunt is a fun word. So it's cock? It's a shitty word, but cunt is a so fun is, so word. So is cock? Yeah. You're a cock, dude. You're a cunt. 
<laughs> Come here. You have to emphasize the T. Give me a kiss. You're cock. cunt. <laughs> can I say my phone is cock? You, yeah, please. So I can tell Siri, like, hey, Siri, hey, cock, 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 cock. Hey, how funny oh, is... Not a baby girl, don't listen. How, feel, how, how funny is Hulu when it... We're not going to say what it says, but how funny is Hulu <laughs> when it greets us? <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> hey, I want to shout out Christian and Green Habitat for supplying us with some joints for this shit. This isn't like a salesman thing where they're sponsoring us. I just like smoking their shit. Yeah, so, for real. <laughs> we're gonna do one day we should we do don't like, have sponsors well, yet. yeah we don't have any sponsors. if you want us to sponsor yeah. you or if you want to sponsor actually, us actually after listening to this if you're still down to sponsor us we, we won't talk about our dicks that much it. yeah uh, or we could sell fleshlights oh, oh, oh. wait is there male fleshlights dildos oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> we can sell replicas of our dicks uh, yeah I think they have that yeah we should do no, it no of our dicks yeah we should do it the no application fee collab yeah I don't know if they're going to go for it because we're nobody, but well, we could try. Everybody's a nobody, dude. <laughs> Look, we believe in Scientology, and thank you for coming. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I love your Scientology jokes. Hey, Gil is a stand-up comedian. Uh, go watch it. Don't fucking comment, dude. Don't fucking comment. I didn't know oh, well, you know what? I'd like to finish with this. Finish. <laughs> and please come for me, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Many years ago, Gil and I finished this show... And decided that we were going to start fucking guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we no, I'm sorry. The show, and it was a good one. It was definitely a good one. And you know, those who play in bands, people come up to you and shake your hand out of respect because you did good. And we were kind of back to back. Like you were standing right here. So people are coming up to us and going... From one to another, because it was it was a great show. It was kind of like a meet and greet. If you've almost. seen us play, dude, we we do play pretty well. Like I won't take that from us. I know there's a lot of other bullshit, but at least we can entertain the. We fuck play out pretty of well endowed. <laughs> and people came up to us, and everyone was like, oh, "Fuck, dude!" I was laughing my fucking ass off. And then the next bro went to Gil and was like, "Dude, you guys are so fucking funny." And then two people came up and they're like, "Dude, we were loving it. You guys are so funny." Blah blah. And after about, I'm not exaggerating, dude. I know I exaggerate a lot. But after like 12 comments of just us being funny, Gil turns. It was like, I know it was literally like Penguin, so he's waving. He's like, hey, dude. He's like, what's up? He's like, did anybody compliment your playing? And I was like, nah, they just said we were funny. And he was like, that's all anybody told me was how funny we were. Yeah. And how many years ago would you say that was? I think we were at the Tiki Bar. No. Okay. Then I don't know. Were we still in El Paso? No. We're in California. I don't know, man. It was a while back, though. But hey, you know what? Ever since that day, we decided that we, was a day. we made a pledge yeah. to get better at our instruments. Literally. Yeah. We we're like, then we suck at playing, dude. Yeah. We're gonna or get maybe our jokes better. are just better. And as Gil and I will say, we are entertainers. Yes, we are, man. You know what? There's, come watch us play. Yeah, come watch us play. Actually, book us. Pay us. <laughs> Pay us. Put money in our account. Give us your money. You think this shit is cheap? And we will... You think it's give fucking you an free event of your life to be in here? Fireworks. Gil will put it Pigs in your flying. butt, dude. You know what I'm Roger saying? Waters will come out on stage. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We kind of for Roger Waters. I love you, man. Let's, Let's get out of here. Cheers. You just opened a new one? Yeah, well, for Okay, later. well, how about we cut and then I open another one, too? Cool. Uh, I guess we don't really have to cut, cut, right? <laughs> just get another one real quick and then we'll do this. How about we just keep talking about how great our dicks are, dude? Nah, this shit's done, dude. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to fuck with you anymore, bro. Well... Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I don't ever want to see you again either. <clears throat> it's kind of hard when we live together. <laughs>